guys. So I thought that I would share a little dilemma with you. Obviously, this is not a serious dilemma in the scheme of things. It's more like a fun planner addict dilemma. Um, but I, I always like to hear the like kind of thought processes behind people's selection of their various planners. And so I was hoping that you would enjoy listening to the musings of a fellow planner addict. So basically, you know that um, I recently started using my happy planner as a meal tracker and that at around the same time, I got this um, beautiful traveler's notebook. So obviously, <laughs> the next logical step is a dilemma. Um, don't panic. I know that 2016 hasn't even started yet. And I said that this was in my 2016 lineup. But I also, if you saw that video, mentioned that this was the one planner that I wasn't really sure if it was going to stay in the lineup. Um, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. So essentially, the idea of a, a food tracker took me and James by surprise. It wasn't something that we were planning to have. And we decided that we wanted to have one because we noticed that we were just basically useless at cooking and making sure that we had, you know, food that we like in the house and stuff like that. And so we thought that if we had a tracker for it, that that would kind of help us to be more accountable. Because if you see a blank space and you realize that you haven't had breakfast, then you know that you have to do something about it. Whereas if you're not recording it, you kind of very easily can, you know, go the whole day without paying much attention. And um, anyway, so we thought that it would be a good idea to try. And we've been using it for about a week. And I have to say that it's been amazing. I wasn't expecting it to make that much of a difference, but it's been really, really good. So you can see where we started using it here. Um, and then it's gone over into um, January, which is kind of a, a weird thing. I've never had a planner like this, although I know that it's very common that the ones that sandwich the months between the weeks have to do this if the month ends, if the month ends in the middle of the week or well if the month sorry if the month doesn't end <laughs> at the end of the week that's what i meant to say like here the, the um the last day of the month was the 20s of the weekly spread was the 27th sorry i hope you know what i mean because that didn't make any sense so the week ends on the 27th and there are a few more days of december and because you've got this january uh, monthly spread here you have to go skip over that and go into the first week of january to find the rest of your December days. So it's kind of weird if you're not used to that, which James and I weren't. Um, so, you know, we were like, ah, where's the end of December? But fortunately I was prepared because I'd heard about it in a lot of planner videos. Anyway, um, so we've been using it for about a week and it's great because you can see it's really, really ideally set up for this. And this is one of the reasons that we decided to use the Happy Planner for this. Um, I got this happy planner and wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it. And it seemed to lend itself to that. So I'll just go over the sort of pros and cons of what I like about the happy planner and what I don't like so much, and then talk about the reasons why it might be worth considering moving to the traveler's notebook. So um, the first thing that we really like about the happy planner as a meal tracker is that it's ideally set up for this. It's got these boxes for morning, afternoon and evening, which as I mentioned in my uh, 2016 lineup video is not a planning format that I would choose for any other purpose, but for meal planning, oh, sorry, meal tracking, not meal planning. Um, it's, it's ideal because it's got enough room for both of us. So like here we can write down J is for James and L is for Lily. So we can write down what we both had in the morning and then what we both had in the afternoon and what we both had in the evening. So it's, it's just, perfectly broken down for that because you, you don't need times. Times would not really be useful. And in fact, I think would be kind of distracting. And if you just had a blank page, that would be okay, but it wouldn't be as perfect as this. This is just ideally suited to it. Um, so that's one thing that we really like about it. And that has been working excellently. And also the, the pages are just the right size. As you can see, we've got enough room to write everything in. Um, you don't have blank pages left over, not, you know, blank spaces left over on the page. Um, it just seems to be perfect for that. And it's also got these notes, which, um, I used last week just to say that like we were kind of missing greens. So we had to, you know, we started to pay attention, like we should get some more greens for the next week. 
And this is something that we never really did before systematically, because if you don't have it written down, then, you know, obviously we like planning. We like putting things down on paper. I don't have to convince you. Um, so it's really an ideal setup for a, for a food tracker. Um, so that's one thing that we like about it. And another thing that we like about it, and I mentioned this in the other video, but I just think you can't say it too often because I'm so amazed by it. This planner just makes me happy. And James said the same thing. Like we both sort of can't get over it. It's so funny. Like I, you know, it's called the happy planner, but I never took it seriously until we had it. And I still don't understand what the secret of its charm is. It's like, you just look at it and, and it makes you happy. And so we've both really been enjoying like recording things in the happy planner because just opening it and seeing the spread, it just puts a smile on your face. So obviously Mambi knew what they were doing when they designed it and, and named it as they did, because it really does make you happy. But I just kind of can't get over that. I was, I found it so surprising. Um, and, and it's funny because I'd seen like, you know, tons of videos about it, but until I actually had it in my hands, I didn't understand how happy it makes you. And I still don't know what the secret is. Um, so that's another thing we, we just, we like it. Um, and those are really, I guess the two sort of main, um, positives to using it. Um, so at this point I I've kind of done quite a good job of convincing myself that it's perfect. I'm <laughs> thinking, what are the downsides? Okay. So the downsides are, first of all, it's really bulky. It's bigger than a five size. Um, I don't have any planners that are much bigger than a five. The only one is this paper blanks diary, which is still smaller than the happy planner and is also much thinner. So this is like kind of by far the bulkiest planner in our collection. And that wouldn't bother me for the most part because we use it at home. It's obviously not something that we're going to be taking out with us every day. So when we first started using it, it, it didn't seem like a problem, but occasionally we go away, usually only to Wales. Like that's the only place that we ever go, but we are going to go back there in um, like the second week of January for a couple of weeks. And the thought of schlepping this with us, along with all of our other planners, um, the other planners are, you know, pretty slim, but this is like, it's, it's heavy. So I'm not really, I don't really like the idea of that. And so the idea of like kind of having to take this with us, because if we were only going somewhere for a couple of days then we wouldn't bother, it's, it's not like we need to track every single meal and we can never take a day off. But if we're going somewhere for a couple of weeks, then it, I think it would be nice to have it with us because we've really got into the habit of it already and, and we like having it. So we were both like, yeah, I don't know about taking that with us. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And then another thing, I mean, you guys already know that I don't like the laminated covers and I have been pondering other possibilities for replacing the covers. I found this really cool Etsy shop called, I think it's called Woodland Cottage Farm or something like that. I'll, I'll leave the link below and they make fabric covers that look amazing for happy planners and also all kinds of other planners. Um, Erin Condren, Inkwell Press, Plum Paper Planner, like all of the spiral bound planners and the happy planner. And they look really, really nice. They have like pockets and, um, you know, like sort of spaces to, uh, like flaps and, you know, spaces to put stickers and stuff like that. They are totally designed with the planner addict in mind and they look amazing, but they are quite expensive, which I, I think that they're probably worth the money because they're handmade and they look like a lot of effort goes into them. And, and like, she has fantastic reviews, but I don't feel like, because I'm sort of trying to spend less money on planning supplies and becoming more minimal minimalist. I really, really like them, but I feel like I kind of can't justify it. And strangely enough, those are the only happy planner covers that I found on all of Etsy that were not laminated. There are a lot of laminated covers that you could get, but nothing that's, you know, like made out of um, chipboard or something like that. So the other option would be to make one myself, which I'm still considering, but like, let's face it, I'm, I'm not very crafty and I just can't see myself doing that because it would involve quite a bit of like, getting the right material and making it the right size. And I might do it, but I, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and, um, I'm not really sure if that would solve the problem because I just might 
often when I make things myself, I just think they don't look very good. So it just might bug me that I've made this cover and it, you know, wasn't as good as I, as I wanted it to be in my head. Um, and you can see that, well, maybe, yeah, it does show up on camera. You can see, see how scratched this is. I haven't done anything to this. This has like just been on the table the whole time. And it's not like there are lots of sharp pointy things on our table. I don't know what it is, but I've heard other people mention this about the Happy Planner covers, that they're not very durable. Um, and again, it, it doesn't bother me terribly because it's not like I have to take this to some kind of like, you know, planner beauty competition or anything, but it's still, it's just, you know, it's the sort of thing that I think over time it would eventually bug me. So there's the, the cover issue. Um, so basically, yeah, on the plus side, the layout is great. The size is great. Um, and it makes us happy. Um, but on the negative side, it's very bulky and I don't like the covers. <laughs> um, that's, I think that's essentially it. Those are the, the main issues. So if we move over to the traveler's notebook, the first thing obviously that is appealing about the traveler's notebook is how light and portable it is. And so that would kind of solve the problem that the happy planner presents in that this would be really easy to throw in a bag. And if you, if you see, these are our, these are our other two home planners, right? This is the actual planner. And then this is like a book of lists. Okay. So if you put these three together, it's a gigantic stack. That seems a bit silly. Whereas these three, this is nice and light and manageable. I wouldn't have a problem taking these three with me to Wales. Um, so it really makes a big difference. Another thing, um, just from a sort of aesthetic point of view, I, and I don't know, this might sound silly, but I kind of feel like a traveler's notebook is more my style than the happy planner. I actually have to confess that I didn't expect to like the happy planner at all. When I bought it, it was because I couldn't find any other disc bound systems and I really wanted to try out the disc bound system. And I was kind of like going back and forth thinking like, do, do I think I could like the happy planner? I really don't like it. I don't like the covers. It's, it's kind of too girly for me, but it's the only disband sister that system that I can get my hands on without exorbitant cost. Um, and that was why I ordered it. And then when it came, um, at first I was like, yeah, I don't like the covers and this is too girly. Um, but then for some reason it kind of grew on me and I think I told you I was going to give it away and then I was just like I can't part with it I love it so much I have no idea why it has some kind of special mystery power it's weird um but I kind of feel like this is just more like the sort of thing that I gravitate towards I really like I, I like I just like how it looks and I like the idea of it somehow better and I, you know, aesthetically, I, it's, it's beautiful. I like this. I like everything about it. Um, so there's that, that's another thing. And then yet another thing, which also might seem silly, um, but is still kind of, a, you know, an, an issue in, in my brain is that I would really like to have a traveler's notebook in my lineup because I kind of, um, I like to. I'd kind of like to have a representative from like all of the major um, planning systems just because I, I like to feel like I'm, I don't know, like experiencing all that the planning universe has to offer, if that makes sense. So I've got a bound book. Well, I've got several bound books and then I've got this disbound um, one here and I don't have a traveler's notebook. And originally the lists that were in here were, were in a traveler's notebook and then it, it seemed like it made more sense to put them into this one, which is totally true. But that left me without a traveler's notebook in the lineup. And that kind of made me sad because at the moment I've got two disbounds, which is, which is great. Cause I, I am actually really enjoying the disbound system. Um, but it just seems a shame not to have a traveler's notebook, especially when this one arrived and this was so beautiful that I felt like it was a shame not to use it because again, things change a lot between ordering something and having it arrive, right? So when I ordered this, I was using the traveler's notebook for the list and I was expecting just to switch out the cover because this was more like the traveler's notebook that I had kind of always been trying to find and couldn't find. Um, but now it, it's, it's sort of redundant. And so using this would mean that I would have 
for the, for the meal tracker would mean that I would have a travel with notebook in my lineup again. And then it would be yay, because I would have like a representative of all of the different planning systems, except for spiral bound. But I do have um, the Jewish calendar, which I'm using as a reference guide to tell me when the Jewish holidays are. So that is kind of like, it's sort of like a quasi member of the lineup, but not really because I don't write in it. Uh, anyway, so that's another consideration. Um, the, the, so those are like kind of the plus side. Those are the reasons that the Traveler's Notebook appeals to me. Um, but kind of on the downside, or at least something that would have to be considered, is that I haven't found a layout that would work as well. So at the moment, I've got the inserts that came with this um, Fodori set, and there are actually four. If you saw my review, I think I said that there were three, and that was because I'd put one of them in my other um, Fodori and I forgot about it. So it also has this line set. Maybe I did mention it. I kind of feel like I didn't. So the only um, like kind of paper design that I really like of these is the is the gridded paper, and it's got this one insert which is like half grid and half blank. Um, so I don't really feel like any of those would be ideal and it's got the, this blank one which doesn't work for me at all I need some kind of structure and the the lines are really big so I don't like any of those um, it has a weekly layout which I was considering using but like I mentioned earlier in the video I, I feel like see it's got times and I don't think that the times are very helpful for this sort of thing because it's not like you need to know you know what you had at like 1 p.m. you just need to know what you had for lunch and they kind of bug me in this context and also for, for both of us there's not enough room in this insert the happy planner is much bigger and that's the perfect size for both of us to to write everything in and as you can see um, so I don't really like the setup and then also it's got a shared weekend and so there's not really enough room to put in certainly for both of us there wouldn't be so I at first I was considering using this as a kind of like weekly roundup but then I, I thought what would we put in that and it's not like I th we want to spend a lot of time on on the meal tracking I think that the meal tracking will only work if it's something really easy that we can just go and jot down and then be able to check it won't work if you have to spend like half an hour on thing that we would just stop doing so I think those are out then the inserts that I already had previously are Midori brand inserts and they're the gridded paper, which I really like. So I was thinking that we could use these as a page per day and have one insert for me and one insert for James. And I even went so far as to label them. You see? Uh, uh, that's Lily food. And then the other one is James food. And so I thought that would be making nice use of the Midori, well, Fodori, because we would each have an insert and I mentioned before that I'm kind of trying to find ways to use the different planning systems to their best advantage. So obviously it makes sense if you're using a traveler's notebook to, you know, do something where you need multiple booklets and it makes sense to have multiple booklets. booklets. So for this, we have it together because there's enough room and that makes sense. Um, but because these are narrower, it really would be more difficult, I think, to have both of us on the same page and also then we'd only have one notebook and then the traveler's notebook would just be essentially a notebook cover which seems like kind of a waste of its of its magical powers so that was how i was thinking of doing it and it would be undated page per day so i'd have to write in the dates which i hate i don't know how people can do that I, like i'm so impressed by people who can cope with undated inserts because i just cannot it's like one of the things in life that i feel like is beyond me um Kind of like bringing packed lunches to work. That's something I've never been able to manage either. Maybe the food tracker will help that. I don't think so, though. Um, yeah, so I just, I was kind of thinking that maybe for, for a food tracker, it would be okay because it's not like I use it to look at the dates. Whereas for my other planners, I need to know what day it is, right? So like, I don't like, I just can't cope with the thought of putting in my own dates, either because I'd make a mistake or because... I feel like I shouldn't have to do that. Like, I just want them to be dated. For this, because it's more of a log. It's like a diary rather than a planner. So I don't think it would be end of the world to, to put in the dates. Um, but I really like the fact that the dates are in this and you don't have to think about it. 
you know what day it is and you go and write down for that day and, and you just it's all there for you. I really like that. So the thought of going to an undated planner makes me really nervous, not an undated tracker. Um, and then the other possibility is also something that I don't really want to do, which is um, to buy new inserts. And that goes along with my whole like trying not to buy so many planner supplies all the time theme <laughs> for 2016. So I found some inserts on Amazon, which look really nice. Um, they are from a brand called Bandit Apple, Bandit Apple Carne. And they look like, they're kind of like pseudo, they're like faux Midori inserts and they're cheaper. So for a Midori weekly insert, it was like £8.50 um, on Amazon. And for this Bandit Apple one, which looks to be pretty similar, it's £5 and it's also available with, with Prime, which I love. And the, the actual Midori brand aren't prime so um so i thought if we got two of those that they're, they're weekly inserts they're also they're still undated but at least we would have a weekly overview because that's another thing that i forgot to mention with these inserts i was thinking day per page would be easiest um but then we wouldn't have a weekly overview and james was saying and i agree that it's really nice to have a weekly overview because we can just see you know kind of a, a pattern something else that we started to do is color code so we've been using this um, this fiction multi pen, which has got four colors. And so we're marking like kind of things that are predominantly greens with green and things that are predominantly like, um, like, you know, rice and potatoes, like starch, um, in blue. And then fruit is black and then like kind of, um, like junk food is red. <laughs> um, so that's like, it's kind of evolved just over the last few days, but we're like, we're quite pleased with that turning into something of a system and so it's nice to be able to glance at the week and then we could say like okay need more green need more fruit whatever um whereas if you're doing day per page you don't really have that kind of overview so the only other possibility besides buying new inserts which i really don't want to do because i've got all of these midori inserts now that would be going to waste um would be a fate even worse than undated inserts drawing in the week myself and I really can't face doing that. I know I sound like a, you know, terrible, like, you know, it's really feeble, but I just know, <laughs> like, I just know that that's not something that I want to do. Um, yeah. So for the, so that's like kind of, those are the, the pros and cons of the traveler's notebook. It's, it's sort of like mainly, mainly aesthetic, but also the portability that attracts me to it. And the fact that it would be nice to have a traveler's notebook in the lineup. Whereas I think that the practical concerns are something that somebody else could easily get over. Like I know that, you know, probably lots of you would be like, I could make my own inserts and undated is fine. And I just, I don't know why I can't do it, but the thought of it just fills me with terror. So that's the issue. Um, James votes for the happy planner. He says um, that he just can't imagine anything else making us so happy. Um, and he's right. It's like, how could we give up this amount of happiness? Um, but he, he also likes the idea of using the traveler's notebook. Um, but he said he, he thinks that meal planning should stay in here because it's perfect for it. But he also agrees that it is too heavy to slip with us to Wales. So he was saying maybe we could use the traveler's notebook as our like temporary traveling food log which I don't like because, you know, being like an OCD planner girl, I'm like, but no, because then it would be split over two books. And I hate the idea of that. And also then we would only use this like when we were away and no, I don't like it. That would be like adding another book. So, um, yeah, but so yeah, James, James is, is kind of in favor of the happy planner. He's like totally enamored with it. So don't let the stereotypes fool you. The happy planner can be for guys as well, despite what they may say themselves, which by the way, I think is very bad. Like, I don't know why they're only marketing it to women. Um, maybe because it's like covered with hearts and stuff, but <laughs> never, never mind. That's, that's another topic. Um, yeah. So that's, that's the dilemma. Um, so I just thought I would share that with you. Um, yeah, let me know if you, uh, vote for one or the other and, um, I will update you when I have come to some kind of conclusion. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my ramblings and I will be back again soon and happy 2016. Oh, and for those of you who are about to start a new Hobonichi, 
Enjoy. I'm sure you will. Tomorrow is going to be a glorious day for all of us. Bye.